Adrian, how did you find the trip so far in your visit? I find it very interesting and insightful. Um, I've been working with farmers in different countries and areas. Uh, and even though we uh, find similarity in the challenges that the farmers are facing, I think that in India there's um, a special context that is really uh, interesting. And what is uh, even more, uh, I think, encouraging is that the farmers are really open-minded and ready to uh, you know, learn more about new practices and are ready to take the risk of shifting their um, you know, conventional practices that they have learned from their um, uh, elders to new practices that hopefully will improve their livelihoods. And, uh, mm. uh, so you, you think that this is the openness is more in India than in other places you have? Where else have you worked? Um, so we had projects in uh, Sri Lanka, uh, okay. Indonesia, and what we can really see is that here farmers uh, um, have a more entrepreneurial uh, okay. mindset. Oh, that, that's interesting um, to know. So uh, because we don't get to see the, the rest of the world's picture, so it's good coming from it that we have we are better placed to, you know, in making mm. the changes. What is the primary goal of coming here? Could you explain? Uh, what things do you want to work with us in with Tomorrow's Foundation? Yeah, so um, we've been introduced to Tomorrow's Foundation through uh, Rafael, uh, the, uh, one of the co-founders of XAPA. Um, what is really important for us is to find uh, partners for the long term and organization that um, we're comfortable to work with because we're aligned in the principles and the values that we commonly share. And we think that Tomorrow's Foundation uh, is one of those organizations. Um, I came here to understand uh, the diversity of the projects that you've implemented so far mm -hmm. and the impacts that you had on the communities. And what I've been able to, uh, to witness is the incredible um, uh, material and immaterial assets. that you've built up so far in the different um, uh, livelihoods and agricultural projects that mm. you have developed and the trusted relationship that we have with yeah. the communities. Yeah, yeah. We, are, we are proud of you, are proud of our community connections, that's, that's for sure. So, uh, uh, I believe you are here for the AWD project introduction in Adelands, in which SAPA does in, in, you know, in encouraging uptake of this practice. Yes, of course. Um, so at XAPA, uh, we see ourselves as a convener and trying to align the agenda of all the parties that are um, uh, directly or indirectly linked to the rice value chain. Mm. Uh, we've got on one hand uh, corporates and investors that are increasingly uh, pushed to look at the, in the impact they have on their uh, downstream value chain, mm. uh, I mean upstream value chain. And that means first and foremost the farmers that they supply and source uh, the rice from. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to provide best practices to those farmers so that they can improve their livelihoods and at the same time uh, provide good quality products that meet the standards of um, uh, uptakers. We also want to work with uh, committed companies, uh, organizations on the ground uh, that have um, trusted relationship with the communities because um, we need the farmers to commit to the practices that they're um, 
adapting uh, because the carbon that is sequestered or avoided uh, should be uh, uh, avoided on the long term. Uh, yeah, we yeah. don't want to avoid for just one yeah. season and switch back to the previous cool, practices cool, cool. the next. What part did you like the best among the sites that you visited, the projects that you saw? Well, uh, regarding AWG, it was interesting to see that some of the farmers were already interested in trying out the new practices with the demo plots. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the methodology of showing uh, uh, conventional practices versus new practice yeah. is the best way for farmers to get a hands-on experience exactly. yeah. uh, on those uh, shift of practices and to convince them uh, through, you know, um, uh, quite rational uh, PNL analysis. Yeah and that they can exactly. see a uh, reduction of their pollution costs. also cost. you do, very do quantitative quantitation of the difference in outcomes and inputs and outputs that we get out of. So it's, I think it's, exactly. a, uh, it's a good experimental design as well as a good social design in that. Uh, so anything else, how, how did you like the education in uh, efforts that are going on in the education well, vertical? One aspect that's uh, what, what struck you um, from Tumor's Foundation that we found also really interesting is that you have uh, multi-dimensional impacts. Yes. Uh, you yes. not only work on agriculture or education, but you try to support communities on the different challenges that they are facing and um, really have a holistic approach. Yeah. Uh, so helping the farmers uh, with their practices, helping their kids get access to quality education, and that's really the type of uh, multi-dimensional impact projects that we're looking for. Okay. So, uh, since the financing is from climate, is there any opportunity for the climate finance to assist in doing this kind of, uh, address this kind of multi-dimensional aspects? Uh, it's other than carbon or whatever is agricultural yeah. practices. What we market, especially on the demand side, is that um, we're moving, maturity of investors is increasing and uh, we're moving from uh, uh, individuals that are, were in the past solely looking to offset their emissions mm. to um, investors and off-takers that are looking for quality projects yeah. with not only a carbon impact but also high social impact. And so Excellent. favoring those multi-dimensional yeah, uh, projects. Because that, that makes it all the more important that it, it, the ideas get hold in the community. Exactly. Okay. Well, it was awesome. I think we'll catch up with you again. And uh, thank you.